It's time for my blog part. Yay. So I recently went through this big Chronicles of Arnie cake. And I went through the stories, the movies, and everything. I was like, yeah, this is awesome. Until I got to the ending. I was not fond of the ending. It actually really upset me. For some background information, I am not religious, so I doubt I'm the target audience for Chronicles of Arnie. And I actually think it's funny. My, my friend and I have this running joke of Aslan. Just Aslan jokes. So, I obviously am not the target audience for this. You know, read it anyway. Thought I'd get to get it. Thought I'd have fun with it. But no, the last battle really upset me. Actually, a lot of things in the books upset me, but this isn't one I'm going to focus on. And if you're a Conor Sinarni fan, you probably already realized what I'm getting at. Susan. I gotta admit, Susan was always my favorite pedancy. She was the one I was like, that girl's cool. She's got a bow and arrow. So I always liked Susan. So, you know, imagine my feels as I read The Last Battle, and Peter's like, Queen Susan's no longer a friend of Narnia. What? Side note, friend of Narnia makes me think like friend of Dorothy. So I went through all these like Chronicle of Narnia, Chronicle of Narnia wikis and the Wikipedia page and different takes on it and ideas. I read Neil Gaiman's The Problem with Susan. Strangely sexual, but okay. Was well, really nice. Thing, Cause that, that's what I thought. Cause you get to the end, and they're all like, yeah, we're all in Narnia now in Aslan's country, yay! And Aslan's like, yeah. Cause you did. What? Well, I don't like that. They all died before they were even old enough to do anything. And yeah, they get to live in Narnia for the rest of their lives. But they're dead. And I get, you know, Aslan's country is heaven, and they want to want to get to heaven. But Susan's not there, and it just seems so callous, the way they're like, oh yeah, she doesn't believe in Narnia anymore, she dismisses it as childish game, she's all obsessed with lipsticks, nylons, and invitations. But they never stop to go, huh, I wonder how Susan's gonna feel about the fact her entire family, siblings, parents, cousin, all family friends, and basically everybody died in a horrific train crash. Not even a second. Not even anything spent talking about it. It's just, you yeah, whatever, Susan. Nylons and invitations. Which seems a lot to me like she's being made the villain. Well, not the villain, per se. She's being made bad because she accepted to grow up. Instead of clinging on to childhood memories. And I get the whole thing. It's supposed to be like, you can grow up, but don't turn your back on God. You can accept other things, but don't make other things more important than your work. You know, your god. I understand that. I totally do. It's just when you make your god a talking lion in the land of Narnia, which they access through a wardrobe in the first one, then you get a little lost with your allegory and stuff with me. Because, like, let, let me just tell you, I mean, look at it from Susan's point of view. She's a practical, she's always one with practical pregnancy. You know, she was the one who was like, this isn't happening. And they're like, talking beavers. But, you know, she accepts that she's in Narnia. She grows up in Narnia, you know? Like, for 15 plus years, her and her family, you know, they ruled over Narnia. She had life experiences. She grew up. She had suitors. She had friends. She had things that happened. She ruled a country. She matured. She became Queen Susan the Gentle. She went through all that, and she had it all yanked away. Back to, like, her little self. Back to being a kid, having a puberty again, having to go from being a queen to being just a little know-nothing brat in World War II. I mean, yeah, that was a big deal. And so she was always the one who was like, well, this is our home now, because that was the easiest way to accept it, because we're all shitty, then we're going back to Narnia. And then when they did go back to Narnia, and Prince Caspian, then as I was like, yeah, you and Peter, you can't come back. I'm sorry. You guys are... Narnia has handled all it can handle you. It's taught you all to teach you go. So she gets her hope of being in Narnia again. 
and then she gets it yanked away again. I mean, she has either two options here. Continue to believe in Narnia and Aslan, the talking lion, and all the talking animals with the magic tree, and the white witch, and all those things. She can believe in that, talk about it a lot, you know, hold it in her heart, and start thinking maybe she's crazy and that nothing in her life will ever compare to the awesomeness that was Narnia, and her whole life will be lived waiting for something that might never come, because all she's experienced from Narnia is being yanked out of it and having her heart broke. Or she can decide to move on and forget about it because it's too painful to, 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 to remember. She can choose to move on with her life, try to live the best she can, and not think about Narnia. Because the way I see it, I think Susan never stopped believing in Narnia. It was just easier to deny it than to be like, oh yeah, this happened, but it's over now, and I have to try to live my life wanting something to compare to that. And I get Narnia's awesome, and I get they're all like, yeah, we love Narnia. But I don't think it's a good thing for them to die that young, just so they can be in Aslan's country forever. Because it's tragic, it's horrible, they're dead. And yeah, I get there's everything's paradise and everything's happy in Aslan's country, but they're still dead, and at least Susan alive, you know. Like it talked about no game is problem with Susan. She's gonna have to identify the bodies. How's she gonna live the rest of her life knowing that everyone is dead? And if she did believe in Narnia, then what kind of god would do that to her? How would she think that? How would it be okay? And I see a lot of people being like, I'm afraid I'm gonna become like Susan. Or it breaks my heart to know Susan turned her back on Narnia. Can you blame her? I mean, I think everyone needs to needs to step back and understand Susan because C.S. Lewis just kind of blew her off. And I know he said in a letter to the fan that Susan's story wasn't over and that she would repent. Let's look at the differences between Susan and Peter. Because, you know, Peter's older and Peter still believed, Susan didn't. Well, let's look at what they did after they got out of Narnia for like the last time and stuff. Peter went to go study under that professor from the magician's nephew and Line went to the wardrobe, while Susan traveled to America and places like that with her parents. Peter was still surrounded by people who were connected to Narnia and Narnia. Susan saw other cultures, other belief systems, the world, you know? She wasn't surrounded by all this Narnia stuff anymore, and it's easy to just decide that stuff didn't happen, to just, to just lock it all away, and to turn her back on it. So, and in some ways, I think Susan's great because she did let it go, because she grew up. Right? And I don't think she should have been punished by having her entire family killed. I mean, I get that wasn't really the message of it, but what about poor Susan? That's what I want to discuss this week on Bookish Films. The problem with Susan. Because I, for one, she's still my favorite. I still want to just hug her and tell her it's all going to be okay. Also, Nova, cute video of randomness. I liked her top, even though it kind of made you look like a Powerpuff Girl. But, like, really mature power of girl. This week's words of wisdom are keep calm and carry on, a phrase I like to live by. There's actually nothing in my cup. I got my first Jasmine doll to add to my collection.